Hey everyone, today I'm proud to release my Social Security Spousal Benefits Calculator. Now I've looked at hundreds of calculators and the software that's available. I've never seen another one like this and I think it's sorely needed too because spousal benefits continues to be one of the areas where there's a lot of confusion. Now, I don't want to take today's video to dive into how spousal benefits work because I covered that in a video I published just a few months ago. And if you haven't watched that yet, I'm going to link it up below. I'd highly encourage you to watch that. Even if you have to watch it a few times, I promise the concept will start to make sense. And then when you use this calculator in conjunction with that, it's going to be crystal clear. So a big part of the reason that I created this calculator was not that the concept of spousal benefits is confusing. It's just when the lower earning spouse has a benefit of their own, but it's lower than one half of the higher earning spouse's benefit. These are what they refer to as a duly entitled spouse. And where this starts to get complicated is when you start looking at different filing ages between spouses. So if this has confused you in the past, don't feel too bad because it often puzzles even the most seasoned financial planners. But this calculator makes it really easy to understand. Now, in the description, I'm going to put a link to this calculator so you don't have to copy down a long website address. But if you'd rather do it that way, you can just go to caroladvisory.com forward slash social dash security dash spousal dash benefit dash calculator. There, I told you it was long. But again, I'm going to link that up below so you can just click that link and go straight to it. Now, also know that if you're watching this later, the layout and looks of this may change, but the basic functionality is going to remain the same. So when we go to this calculator, the first thing that we need is the date of birth for the higher earner and the date of birth for the lower earner. So in this case, let's just assume that the higher earner was born on January 15th of 1960, which coincidentally is the default in this calculator. And to keep things simple, we're going to say that the lower earner was born on the same date, which is also the default. Next, we need to know when the higher earner will file for benefits because the spousal payment can't be paid until the higher earner files. Now, an exception to this is divorce, which I'll cover in just a moment. And then the date the lower earner will file for benefits is required. Now, in this first example, let's just assume that they both file at exactly full retirement age, which would be 67. So that's January 15th of 2027. So the next input will be the full retirement age benefit of the higher earner. Let's say that's $3,000 and the full retirement age benefit of the lower earner, let's just say that's $1,200. So you can already see down here in the results where it says that at full retirement age, the lower earner would receive $1,200 from their own benefit and $300 from the spousal payment for a total of $1,500, which is exactly one half of the higher earning spouse's full retirement age benefit. Very simple and clean. Uh, let's look at one where they both file at 62. So that would be January 15th of 2022. Now that's going backwards in time a bit. In this case, they couldn't actually receive a benefit for age 62 since there's a weird rule about being 62 through the month. So that benefit would start at 62 and one month and the lower earner would receive $845 from their own benefit and $196 as a spousal payment for a total of $1,041. But both of those are really clean examples. So what happens if we get closer to a real life example and we start to use some different filing gauges? For example, let's say that the lower earner wants to file at 62, but the higher earner didn't file until they were 67, which would be January 15th of 2027. So in this case, the lower earner would receive $845 from their own benefit at 62 and one month. But remember the rule that says the spousal benefit can't be paid until the higher earner files. That means that there would be no spousal payment paid until the lower earner reached 67. And at that point, it would be the full spousal payment of $300. Now, this is where the rules are a little different for people who are divorced. As long as the ex-spouse is at least 62 and the divorce has been final for at least two years, 
the lower earner does not have to wait for the higher earner to file. There are some other requirements as well, and I do have a video that covers them in depth. So if you meet the qualifications as a divorced spouse, you just check this box, and it's going to show the spousal payment starting at the same time as the lower earner's own benefit. So in this case, it would be $845 from the lower earner's benefit and $196 from the spousal payment. Now, one of the things that I just added to this calculator is inflation. We wrestled around with this for a while because there's no precise way to show inflation for benefits that's already occurred and still get an accurate estimate of benefits because there's additional work history, etc. But we did want to add an inflation component because, again, spousal benefits cause the most confusion when there are two to three years difference in filing ages. And it's very rare that we'll see a two to three year stretch without some sort of cost of living increases. So again, if some of this is foreign to you, watch my video on spousal benefits, and I promise the calculator is going to make a lot more sense and be very valuable. So after you play around with this for a while, I'd love to hear your comments. And again, I'm going to link it up down below, as well as the other videos that I referenced as well. Thanks so much for watching.